So I created this little gradient using the freeform gradient tool right here in Adobe Illustrator. It's kind of shifted some colors around here because I wanted to be able to test it out on a colorful background to see how it also translates because we also want to have a white version of our logo that's just pure one color in white. We need to make sure it works well there too. So that's how it would look in all white. You kind of lose a little bit of the detail here by making it all white, but that's okay because you can always use a little bit of a drop shadow there to indicate the bending of the wave. But I think that works pretty well there. And we just we got to keep seeing how flexible our logo is. We need to now do a gray version. So let's go ahead and copy this. A black and white gray version. So, you know, an easy way to do this is go up to edit, edit colors, and I'm just going to be going down to convert to grayscale. It'll convert everything to grayscale for me. I may need to go in and brighten up some colors or put a little bit more darker ink in there. So I think it adapts well to black and white, so that's great. It's good news. So you can see how we're putting it in different environments and it's doing well, so that's, that's a good sign. So we have all these different environments that it works well on, and this is also what you want to present to the client as showing how flexible it is and that you thought about all the different scenarios because it's going to be, it could be embroidered, it can be printed on a metal sign, and you're going to need to have all these different options of one color. You're going to need to have it on a darker background, and then you need to have some full color detailed versions as well. So we've made a lot of progress. I'd love to kind of test this out, um, putting it on some products because in client presentation, that's also really good. But before we do that, we're going to do a client presentation page. We're going to pretty much get this all final. So let's get this in a position where we can present it to a client. We're going to open up a new document. And we're going to do a series of eight and a half by 11, but or whatever uh, kind of standard is in your country. We're going to do an eight and a half by 11 inch document. And we're going to present Let's say that they've already approved the concept, but they haven't seen it adapted in the final type choices yet. So we're going to present them with both of these versions, a horizontal. We're going to put lots of white space between this in terms of the, the presentation. And we're going to do the darker line first. And you could do your client presentations however you'd like. I have that other downloadable resource if you kind of like how I did it there. I like to kind of explain a little bit about what they're seeing. It always kind of helps. So this is what I have for one of the pages for my client presentation. And what's great about this is if you're doing this for a personal logo, you can always uh, have this as a fantastic portfolio piece, a portfolio PDF, or just some great images to put on your portfolio. So be thinking about that as well as you get to kind of uh, constructing that a logo design portfolio. So this is kind of one where I'm showing the flexibility of the logo. So we have uh, all the different backgrounds. We also want to present the color palette and have the hex codes. I borrowed this from my document that you can also download right here. So I just kind of borrowed that so I could easily adapt everything so that we can present the logo. We're also going to present it in grids the same, na same way we did with this logo. So I'm just going to do my hex colors here. I'm just going to go ahead and do my adaptations. You can also name these colors. I know a lot of people do that. You start getting a little bit more in the branding side of things, so the logo presentation. But that's okay. That's all wrapped up together sometimes when you're a logo designer. There's a logo palette. We can go ahead and load. And I like to kind of use some similar colors in my presentation that I have in the brand just to kind of be consistent. So just making that a lighter color. So if we used, we went out of our way to use the golden ratio logo, we also adapted this to grids. And I think it really shows a certain level of professionalism when we think about grids, when we think about the golden ratio. And of course, not every logo needs the golden ratio, but when you do, I think it really goes a long way in presenting your logo that you used a method, you used a, pro a process to make it look come up with what you did. You just didn't slap it together. There was a process, there was a formula. So definitely show that. We're gonna show the grid. I got this grid system from this over here. Right here, the downloadable resource, I was able to kind of copy and paste that grid. So make sure if you ever want any of that stuff, you can easily grab it in that downloadable resource so you don't have to create it from scratch. I just need to make that a little bit darker. So let's grab our horizontal logo presentation. 
how we had it before. There's so many ways you can show the flexibility of a logo and a logo mark presentation. So in this sample, we have a watermark. So we had a nice, easy logo that can adapt to a watermark. And I think in this new logo, I think we have that same chance to show that off as well. Um, also, there's other ways you can present it. You can actually put it on a t-shirt and a couple of products as well and show the logo application. And we're going to do that too. So let's do the watermark and then we're going to do some, we're going to put on a water bottle and we're also going to put it on yoga pants and a couple other things, maybe a t-shirt to kind of really show how the logo looks on products. Because that's really important when you're doing a logo design is seeing it in real life. And, and sometimes getting a real thing printed is not practical, but there's some awesome mock-ups you can download, Photoshop mock-ups that we're gonna use. So let's do the watermark. And let's grab the grayscale version because I think that's gonna adapt to a watermark a lot easier than a color. And all we have to do is reduce the gray quite a bit so they could put this on the back of a letterhead and still read the type over top of it because usually watermarks have type on top of it you want to make sure it's still legible so we can just mark that as watermark so there we have it we have a social media we have a watermark we have the golden ratio the grid system our color palettes our adaptations on different backgrounds. I think if your logo fails some of these tests, you're gonna find out when you start to develop this particular presentation. You're gonna find out if it doesn't work in a single color. You're gonna find out if it doesn't work in black and white. And you're gonna find out if it doesn't adapt uh, well as a watermark or a social media image. This is a great test to put your logo through. And as you work your logo through this, you're gonna be making some tweaks and changes to your logo for the better so it becomes flexible. So next, we're going to do our final thing. We're going to put this logo on products to see how it actually looks so we can really present that in our portfolio, present it to our clients, and also test out the logo to see if it's worth continuing with a particular design.